everyone. How are we all this morning? Hope all is going well for you. Hope you've had a great week uh, following Jesus um, to the point of, past the point of. Last week we, um, you know, we were talking. We finished with um, in our in our the start of our series with discipleship. How Jesus obeyed to the point of death, even the death on the cross, and and how the goal of discipleship. Um, is to understand first that we have the promise um, that we have eternal life secure and that that's where we start. And so therefore from there, the, the pressure of life or the trial or, or debt, hurt, pain, brokenness, whatever it is that we face in life um, isn't the point where we stop, but but it's the, the point where we stop is is, is death because right at that point we're then with Jesus, you know. So, um, and the disciples, the early disciples, understood that very clearly because they'd witnessed Jesus being put to death. So today I want to carry on with um, with with moving us past and and talking a little bit about where that our limit is, right? Um, and and moving us past that, believing that the Holy Spirit is. Is wanting to train us, teach us, and equip us um, with enhanced progress and capacity to to be disciple unto death, to to follow his ways uh, with precision and with power. You know, Matty Hilroth preached a message a couple of years ago about the precision of God and the power of God, and how they both they both connect and work perfectly together. So the precision of God down to the, the minute detail, even of the human body and the power of God, how he can, you know, how he can, he can, he can array the heavens, you know? So, um, in discipleship, it's, it's, there's that balance of God's precision and his power to move in our life. And, and, and I believe that God is, you know, wanting to progress us so that we follow him and his word um, more precisely. We understand it at a, at a different level so that we can use precision <clears throat> and the power of the Holy Spirit to fulfill the plan and purpose that God has for our life. Remember last week we talked about discipleship's not just something that I do in following Jesus. It's something that we do, that we collectively do walking together um, you know, teaching and equipping each other and, uh, you know, imitating Jesus and showing you a model of what Jesus would do in that circumstance, um, you know, for our growth, not just my growth, but also for the introduction of other disciples um, to follow to follow Jesus. And so that precision and that power and that capacity to follow Jesus you know, uh, with obedience and precision is critical to the disciples' life. Um, and I, I don't think it's something that's unattainable. I think it's something that is attainable, that the Spirit of God uh, and the power of God is our advantage, right? Jesus said, it's to your advantage that I go so that I don't stay with you in one location, in one place, but I go so that the help of the Holy Spirit can come, so that the Holy Spirit can endure with you with power, each and every one of us, each disciple endured with the power like Jesus was with us, like he actually is. He's living and abiding in us now. So I think discipleship, the, the progression of discipleship should move us past our limits, you know, should grow us and mature us past what, you know, wh where we stopped initially or, or what we struggled with initially into a into a, a new space of, of freedom. Um the Apostle Paul encouraged Timothy um, in the first book of Timothy, I think it's chapter four, um, you know, where he was talking about, you know, observing, giving attention to detail so that his progress would be evident to all, so that there would be this progressive perspective in discipleship. We become a disciple instantaneously, the moment by faith we believe in Christ, we we declare we're going to follow him. Then there's this progressive um, process that we go on where we learn to understand um, and discern the ways of Jesus Christ. So today, that's what I want to I want to stretch out a little bit, go a little bit further into connecting into God's plan and purpose for how we should walk. So where is your limit? Um, you know, Jesus went beyond death. Death was not Jesus's limit. Um, you know, the the, the actin, actions of the Pharisees wasn't Jesus's limit. Um, you know, the temptation of Satan in the wilderness wasn't Jesus's limit. He he was able to follow um, the Father's instruction um, past those those limits, and and the Holy Spirit's wanting us to progress past 
those limits in our life as disciples. Um, so Jesus went beyond death. So so we can go beyond the obstacles that life is, right? Life itself is an obstacle. Um, just living is an obstacle to living for Jesus because of life, you know, the temptations, the distractions, the, the pain, the suffering, the trial, the trouble, the persecution, the you know, just, just the ways of the well-worn tracks of the world, you know. Um, so just life is an obstacle, but we can move past every obstacle that life that life has presented us as disciples of Jesus Christ under the power of the Holy Spirit and that desire and that willingness to give ourselves to follow after Jesus. Remember, we looked at Luke 9 <clears throat> last week and how, you know, we to, to gain our life, we have to lose it. If we keep it, we'll, we'll, we'll miss it. So there's that decision that the disciple makes that I'm not following my ways or the world's ways or selfish rebellion anymore. I'm following what Jesus' instruction is, trusting and believing that in following his ways, there will be the evidence of fruit and power and the kingdom's expression and touch on my life in the midst of doing life, in the midst of having pain and breakdown of relationship and all those things that, you know, that, that are obstacles uh, to us following Jesus perfectly or following Jesus precisely. But it's God's plan that we do that, and he's equipped us, and, and, and the new creature that we are is designed for it. So let's just, let's just carry on. Each of us have a point or a place where, you know, it's our to the point of. You know, it's it's out to the point of. You often hear, you know, I, I I witnessed or I heard, I decided that that's it. I'm not doing this anymore. Or or unless God, you come through and and you you answer this prayer, I'm 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 done with it. Or you know, we may even have those thoughts ourselves. But can I encourage you today that it is God's plan and God's desire that you would walk out the actions in your life that he's planned for your life and he want, he's, he's there to empower and equip you. And that's what we're going to touch on in the area of discipleship today. Maybe, maybe following him to the point of, um, you know, in, in our life is an event, um, you know, or a pressure or a circumstance or a decision. Last week I talked about, you know, maybe it's pain. I'm going to follow him to the point of that pain or follow him to the point of that breakdown in a relationship, or follow him to the point where, where it's like, that's it, I'm not going to follow his instructions anymore because I can't see it working. Um, discipleship carries, I'm following Jesus right to death, to the point of death where, where death's the last move and then we're ushered into his presence. And the promise that we started out with is the promise we experience in its fullness at that point. So discipleship is a life leadership change, right? So you, when we become a disciple, and we're actually in the state of being a disciple to acting out a disciple. There's a leadership change that's happened in our life where we're no longer led by our ways, our will, our desires, our life uh, expectations or cultural pressures and social acceptances. But, but by what Jesus said, after all, we are followers of Jesus. After all, we are disciples of Jesus. So we go from our old boss to our new boss, where our old boss, self, world, um, you know, doesn't make the decisions, doesn't decide what we're going to do. But our, our new boss does, Jesus. Remember, your old nature is dead and it only followed your old boss. So your old nature is dead and it could only follow your old boss, your yourself, um, the world, your flesh, the lusts of the flesh. But your new creature, your new creation, the new creature that you are in Christ, by design is created in Christ so not even out of your oneness, but is forever in oneness in Christ. So it's not something you gained, something you got when you became a disciple of Jesus. It's something you are. It's something we continue to be. It's like discipleship. We don't go to church. We are the church, right? And if we understand that we don't go to church, but we are the church, then we can actually be the church, right? So, so a disciple doesn't gain something in Christ and then have to hold it or, you know, or understand it um, to live out of it. It's it, disciple is, is our new being. It's, it's, it's who we are. When we, when we trust in God, when we, when we repent, as we talked about last week and we follow Jesus, we are a new creature. It's our new state of being. 
we are in discipleship. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're activating what a follower of Jesus looks like um, because we're in him and, and we're living out of that constant relationship with him. So to follow our new boss is a, it's a natural progression. So it's, it's not something that you have to find a way to focus on or find a way to do. It's, it's by design. Um, it's by design we can do it. And I think that'll just help someone today that, um, that by design, by the precision of your design in Christ, you're a new creature to operate out of the presence and power of Christ to follow his commands in our life and live a life of obedience to the point of death like Jesus did. So discipleship is you willingly following your new boss, not progressively, but at a, an instant, at a moment in time, that moment you were saved, that moment you became a disciple, and then there's a progression or an advancement um, or, or progress in your actual discipleship. And so, so you're not learning to be a disciple. Sorry, you're not learning to be a disciple. You're learning to walk out the disciple that you are. So you learn progressively to discern. A disciple learns progressively to discern and understand what your new boss's ways are. So we learn progressively who Jesus is as the Holy Spirit teaches us and equips us and, and as we develop discernment and understanding and discovery of even the, the, the scriptures. But we are a disciple. So if we are a disciple, we can be discipled. We can be a disciple. Um, and I think that's important for us today to understand that we, we, we are a disciple. So therefore we can be a disciple. Just like we don't go to the church, we are the church. And so if we understand we are the church, then we can be the church. Paul said to Timothy, let your progress be evident to all. That's the scripture I was talking about before in 1 Timothy 4, 15 and 16. So discipleship is definitive in the sense that, that it's who it's who you are. It's who you decided to be. You took on the new life when you declared your faith. And it was the gift, um, that salvation gift that, that only Jesus can do, that only faith in him can, can give you. It's not, you know, it's not by efforts, not by works. It's by faith. Um, you know, so it's, it's the sense that you decided. And at that decision, you became a new creature, able to grow and progress in your development in living for him. <clears throat> out of him unto death, living for him out of the relationship we have with him, out of the oneness we have with him unto death, and then realizing the eternal promise of eternal life, which is where we start. Remember, it's not where we're aiming. It's we start from there. And so from there, we're now expressing and we're now living the whole new life that continues on when we die. So the disciple's goal is unto death, which will release the works, right? So if, if the disciple's goal is unto death, then there will be a release of the works that God has purposed for us to walk in beforehand. There'll be a natural release. There'll be a progressive release because it's what the Holy Spirit is wanting to lead us in and guide us in and teach us in, right? Not just in doctrine or in instruction, but in, in, in actually doing, in, in, in the actual action, the acting out the life that God has promised us through his precious and amazing son. <clears throat> so, so if you, if a disciple willingly, right? So a disciple, this is, there's will connected to it. If you willingly lose your life, you will save it. To lose it is that willingness to live the new life in Christ. So how do we, how do we, how do we lose our life? <clears throat> Well, it's, it's in the willingness to live our life for Christ. That's how, that's the, that's the decision. That's the connection, right? So when Jesus was talking in Luke 9 about those who, let's just read it again in Luke 9, <clears throat> verse 24. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and his, is himself destroyed or lost. That's verse 25. So there's a great profit, right? There's a great profit in losing your life. So what is it to lose your life? Well, it's to, it's to commit to willingly following the ways of Jesus. Um, that's putting off the old man. Remember, the old man's dead 
in trespasses and sin. And, and so this new life, we have this new creature. It's designed to live the new life in Christ. So when we willingly desire, decide to do it, we put off, we lose our life and we gain the, the life that Christ promises us in him. You know, our conversion is not for a convert, right? So the day you, you were converted or you converted to Christianity, the day of your conversion, the day of your salvation was not just for a convert. It was not just so that a, the promise of eternal life could be realized sometime in the future. Just like your salvation is not just for the promise of eternal life. Your conversion and your, and your um, salvation is for a whole new life to be lived from now on. Right? It's not just a, a change in a moment for an end goal. It's a change in a life for a continuing connecting goal of God expressing himself, of God empowering you and equipping you to act out and to do and to work out of his life, to work out of his of his ways. Right? So so that conversion that conversion connects it can and connects and it continues to connect and it continues to connect you to the promise of eternal life when you follow him willingly in debt, in pain, in hurt, in brokenness, in loss, in trial, in trouble, in betrayal, right? So so the conversion and the promise of eternal life, our salvation, uh, that continues to connect us and connect us and connect us to the new life that so that's the end goal that's that that's where we're going to end up but the life that's in that space it's not just for a convert it's for us to be able to follow jesus and empower us and equip us to follow jesus you know in the strife of life in in the in the obstacle of life in debt in pain in hurt in loss in trial and trouble and in betrayal to follow him willingly right to to willingly follow him and so therefore in all these things right all these things that you know that life throws at us brings our walk purpose, right? So it brings purpose to our walk. It brings the intent of God to operate in His dominion, uh, you know, with heaven's power and promise in your walk, in your new life, releasing the works of heaven. Let me say that again. So in all these things, it brings your walk purpose. Right. So as you're in debt, as you're in strife, as you're in trial, you know, maybe you're in pain. Maybe these things are happening right now. It gives your disciple. It gives you the disciple purpose in your walk to to walk out of, to work out of, to act out of the life that we have in Christ right here, right now. So that the works of heaven, the works of of oneness with the father into your life that he is working in you that you should walk in, right? So there's, there's activity, there's doing that we can walk in and walk out of um, right here, right now, um, that our conversion and our disciple, becoming a disciple um, is a part of, is God's goal for. Let's have a look at Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2. Uh, Ephesians 2. Let's go there. Did have a bookmark. Now the bookmark's gone somewhere else. So Ephesians 2, um, let's go from verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in. So now can I just can I just lift our eyes for a moment? Maybe um, you know just just lift our heart for a moment um, as we just do a bit of a word study around a couple of these words. The workmanship was one we're going to study and works is another one we're going to have a look at. Um, just to lift our eyes for a moment that that um, the works we should walk in, to the works that we should walk in and, and, and allow the, the Holy Spirit to expand on that understanding, what that work might be, that it's, that it's not just a good deed that, you know, you've got to somehow be tuned into and hear the Holy Spirit and be at the right street corner at the right time to meet that person's need. That's part of it. And it is, it is a part of what we do. 
but it's not the only thing that we do. So, so if we just think that a good work <clears throat> that we should walk in is a specific event that we're waiting to connect to, um, I think we'll miss the activity that a disciple, sh- that I believe the Spirit of God wants the disciple to operate in all the time, right? So <clears throat> the works are more than that, right? They're, they're obviously more than your effort um, to prove or justify your salvation. That's The scripture deals with that, that, that we're saved not of works, but there are works that we should walk in. Um, and that word work is the same word. So we're going to have a look at that in a moment. So it's it's not the confusion around, you know, works and the law and grace and, and all that stuff. You know, it's, it's not about that. It's about operating out of, it's about acting out of what God purposes us to act out of. And that's our relationship, and the power of the Holy Spirit, the oneness we have with him so that we can move about our world in our space, living the life we have that is full of obstacles, following his way, seeing heaven's touch, heaven's provision, heaven's power manifest itself here on earth. And when we die, we receive the full reward. Right? So I believe that there, um, that, that it's more about the here and the now, right? So, so you're, you're a new creature in Christ now that you're a follower of Jesus. And when you, when you make a move today, when you make a move in this moment, when you make a decision, it's it's there, there's a there, there's an expression and an act that Jesus wants us to follow. We want He wants us to follow His way, so that in each moment we act, we're actually walking in the provision of a good work that God prepared beforehand that we should walk in. So let's have a look at the word work. Um, there, that not of works, lest anyone should boast. Should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. So works and works there, it's the same word. It's the word ergon. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Um, Ergon. And it means to work, to toil. It means an act um, or a deed, um, a doing or a labor. Right. So so let's just look at. Let's not look at verse nine. Uh, the, the, let's look at verse ten, which is the work, the good works that we should walk in. Right. So there is good toil. There is there are some good actions. There's good deeds. There's good labor. Uh, there's good things we do um, in Christ. Right. So in Christ Jesus, for good acts, doing good, not just deeds but acting, doing out of our oneness with Jesus. So the emphasis here is that there are prepared works that we do out of our oneness with Jesus. And obviously that means that, you know, that appointed moment that we're waiting to connect to where we're going to be at the right place at the right time and the Holy Spirit's going to guide us. But that's not all it is. It's, it's, it's the action, right? It's doing out of our oneness. The disciple does out of their oneness with Jesus every minute of every day not just one or two moments that are divine, but every minute of every day. So let's look at the word workmanship. The word workmanship is uh, the Greek word poiahama, poia, poiama, <clears throat> and it is a product, right? Our product is something produced during a process. So our workmanship, we are being produced during a, during a process, the process of faith and believing and accepting and repenting, but the process of willingly following him, uh, we are his workmanship, so we are a product of that willingness to follow. So um, something produced, right? So you are being produced, you're a product in Christ, a new product in Christ, right? A fabric, this word fabric is a really cool word. It it can mean you know weaving or knitting, right? So so let's let's read it there. For we are his weaving and his knitting together in Christ. So he's in Christ. There's this there's this connection of of um, of two things. There's connect. There's this there's this product of of a process um, where, where we're being produced during a process and a fabric is something woven together, something knitted. So we're woven and knitted in Christ for a purpose, for an, for an act, right? For a work. Um, the fabric is also, you know, um, things that come together to construct a thing, right? So the fabric of this building, right, is the walls, the floor and the roof. And so you, you, you might say, um, that the, the building are, the building is the, 
these things are the fabric of the building, right? So they consist, they, all those things put together make a building, right? So, so you and Christ, the disciple and Christ put together are produced for, um, you know, there's a process in that space to produce a thing, right? Um, to, to weave and knit together for what? For good works. Right, so so we are a product. We're in the process of being knitted together. We're a fabric. We're being woven and knitted together. We, Christ and us together, the oneness that we have, the new creature that we are in Christ. That that Christ and us are. He's not just Christ and us, and we're together, and and we're we're hanging together. We're actually a whole new fabric. We're a whole new together. We're a whole new product together, made for right, produced for good works that were prepared beforehand that we should walk in we should walk in this oneness this whole new product this whole new fabric of our essence that we have in christ discipleship discipling we should walk in right this is this this is this is essential to understand so let's read it again so for we are his workmanship we are the product of us coming together with christ of us making that decision by faith we are the product we are a fabric we are we are joined together with christ created in him created in him for right for toil for an act for an action right so so it's not just about a deed um it's about action right so so a disciple let's think about the early disciples um, let's think about Ananias and Sapphira. You, you know, all know the story how they they sold property, um, but they operated out of the old nature. They operated out of the. Uh, uh, they didn't operate. They didn't follow the the boss, right? The, their new boss, and the the consequences were were deadly, right? So so the good works are not just about a deed that we're, we're going to be at the right street corner or in the right supermarket or we're going to make the right decision and the Holy Spirit's going to supernaturally guide us. That's part of it because it's part of the definition, but it's also about an act. It's about a doing. So a disciple follows Jesus, not just, right? So a follower of Jesus now when you sell your property, right? The works you should walk in are... Now, how do you deal with the prophet? Right? So the works you should walk in are how you act out the dealing with the proceeds of that sale. So it's not a, it's not a, you know, a, a supernatural deed, so to speak, where you're waiting for that moment, um, where the power of God's manifested and someone gets healed or someone's need gets met. That's all part of it. But the disciple has to discern, the disciple has to follow Jesus' way in how to deal with profit and the process of how to uh, be you know be transparent with that whether you know we're no longer led by greed we're no longer led by deception so we're following Jesus in a whole new way and the consequences right the promise is there to to make it to eternal life but the consequences of our daily decisions could affect that that eventual outcome so that's why it's that's why eternal life is the starting point our conversion and our salvation is where we start uh, it, it, you know, it, the promise of eternal life is the starting point. It's not just somewhere we end up. Otherwise, if it's just where we end up, we'll approach the dealings of our activities in life totally differently. And that's where I believe the Holy Spirit is really wanting to engage us in, in a whole new measure, right? Because the Father has is prepared beforehand that we should walk in, right, these good works. So the activity right, the action that we should walk in this act to deal with the profits of the sale of that um, of that property, the way the Holy Spirit would lead us, the way Jesus spoke of it. And we know that there were disciples that did that. They did that. They sold property and they kept it and they shared it amongst themselves. And that was what the Spirit of God was speaking to them about. Then there were two disciples that didn't, Ananias and Sapphira, and the outcome was deadly. So let us let me encourage you today. You're designed <clears throat> to walk in His ways, and there are good works, right? There are acts. There's labor. There's toil that have been prepared beforehand. That out of our relationship with Jesus Christ, that He is producing in us. That moment we made the decision, He's producing in us a developing capacity, a progressive capacity to connect with and to walk unto death, living out of His ways.
Jesus would have you walk the way he would walk. Remember, a disciple is someone who desires to model and imitate an example who the, the one they're following is. Today, I pray that the Holy Spirit would continue to, to work deep in our hearts, to work deep in our activities. And we're going to continue on in this um, the next couple of months around discipleship. And, and I really sense the Spirit of God wanting to target a couple of specific areas. Some things that, um, you know, the world does so well and that it's so enticing for us to, you know, to fall into or to or to not connect the difference from, you know, or the world is is really tempting us in this space into how we operate. And it's around our pride. It's around our finances um, and, and it's around our relationships. So we're going to touch on a few specific things next time. But I pray that you would be blessed. I pray that the Lord has, has ministered to you through his word today and that this study this month on disciples discipleship um, is really deepening our understanding that we are born again, we are saved, and that that's the starting point so that we can live out of the expression, the touch and the dominion of God in every activity of our life, because that's what a disciple willingly does, gives themselves to the leadership change of Jesus Christ in our life. Be blessed. Have a fantastic Sunday. Um, We love you guys and look forward to seeing you soon. Bless you. Bye. Thank you.